Okay, Anthony is here. Awesome. Hello, An Anthony. Can you hear me? Hold on. Let me add. The gates of hell will not will not prevail against righteous. Absolutely. Okay, there's an echo. Uh, Anthony, can you kind of? Yeah. How, how do I get rid of that? I think you just mute your mic. Can you mute it? Like mute your computer. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. Have you muted it? I, I I'm not hearing it, so it looks like we're good. Okay, hold on. You're muted now. Just mute your. Can you mute your speakers? Okay, I can't hear you're muted. Can you hear me? Okay, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, man. You're muted. Hold on. All right. Can you hear okay, me? Okay, now you're good. Yes, you're good. We're good. Uh, yeah, it sounds like there's an echo. Slight echo, but it's not that bad. Uh, just a, just a second. Okay. I think I got rid of the echo. Okay, let me say some. Okay, yeah, I'm not hearing myself. So okay, good. Uh, uh, so where where should we begin? Like, uh, like what what kind of um punishments are you talking about? Like total destruction. I think there's gonna be yeah massive destruction in the Vatican. Like what type? So. My, my, my point is that if Sodom and Gomorrah was not tolerated, if Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, and these people weren't even Catholics, they were pagans in those days, what makes us think that God is just going to watch as his institution, which is supposed to represent him on earth, is doing these evils and just sit around? Like, there's going to be punishment from God. No, I'm... No, I, I I didn't suggest that. Uh, I know I know that there is going to be a purification of the church, and you know there is going to be a chastisement of of, of the church. Um, but total destruction. I mean that, that you know that, that would be God attacking His own bride, attacking mm. the, uh, the body of His own Son, persecuting persecuting the body of Christ. That would well, make sense. Okay, but doesn't the Bible say that the wrath of God will hit the can land on the or rain on the good and the wicked? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, righteous people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, right. Yeah, I mean that, that's talking about individual people, but the body of Christ. You know, sure. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, you, you have to believe that the church is not just a human institution; it's a divine institution. Um. So. When I'm talking about the institution of the church, I'm talking about the bureaucratic institution. Yeah. So you have the you have the Jerusalem up on high in in the New Testament that St. Paul talks about in his letter to the Hebrews. He says, Now you have come to the Jerusalem on high, where you have saints and you have angels and you have the Holy Trinity. Obviously, when I'm talking about priests who are sexual predators, I'm not speaking about the Jerusalem up on high. I'm talking about the institution of the church, which is actually, which is physical. It's a, it's supposed to be a physical representation of the Jerusalem up on high, of the eternal Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that's what I mean, first off. And secondly, um, if, Jeru if there's going to be a great chastisement, how would this happen without massive amounts of violence? It's like, it's not like a, you know, that's my well, question. Yeah, I mean, in the end times, there is going to be a lot of uh, violence against the church. Um, uh, I mean, it's it's unclear from Catholic prophecy and from scripture, like exactly when. I, I mean, you know, there, there's going to be different chastisements. There already has been throughout history, you know, but but you know, but you're suggesting that, that like the church itself will be destroyed. I'm not saying that the by the church, I'm not talking about the the holy body of people. I'm not talking about people who it, well, are the, okay, righteous, the, church the righteous may, but the righteous may be destroyed in the midst of that destruction. Yes, because righteous oh, yeah, people yeah. die it, uh, all the time in wars yeah. and of all sorts of things. I mean, I'm pretty sure all the times that God allowed for the sacking of Jerusalem to happen, that they were good people who died in those as well. Um, yeah, but but. When you look at the situation in Rome 
and you see the church covering up for sexual predators constantly. And if God destroyed Sodom, I think God is going to end up sacking the Vatican, destroying the Vatican. That's what I believe. Um, just like God allowed for the destruction of Jerusalem. There is a temple. There was the temple of Jerusalem. And the temple was supposed to be a physical representation. But there's also physical representations on earth for his church. So it's not far-fetched to say that churches will be destroyed, that priests will be killed, that bishops will be killed. Remember, there was the sacking of 1527 in Rome, in which you had the Holy Roman Empire, mainly German uh, mercenaries, the Landsknecht, as they called them, and who destroyed, uh, who just who sacked Rome. It was the most horrific, bloodiest sacking yeah. of Rome in its history in 1527. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not denying that something like that might happen, but. But I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, you, you seem to be suggesting that the Church of Rome itself, like the very seat of authority of the, the church, will be permanently destroyed. Yeah, I, I don't see how that's really far fetched because if I mean, the I church mean, is not. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that would be, I'm, you know, Saint Jerome uh, wrote a letter to Pope uh, Damasus. I think that's how you pronounce it. You know, you probably read it where he says. I know that this is the rock upon which uh, the church is built. You know, it, okay. I mean, I mean, it's the rock is permanent. But uh, but also don't the, forget the, yeah, the, this the sea. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, God's going to destroy you know the whole world at the end of time, as far as as far as we know. But don't but, uh, forget, okay. But don't forget that Saint Jerome also wrote after the sacking of Rome by the Germanians that God allowed for the sacking of Rome because of its sins. Yeah. And Rome was a Catholic city. That's. I think we're not really in disagreement here. I think you're thinking that I'm saying no, that, that, no, that, I mean, the, I, that that the eternal Church of God is going to be destroyed. But the, yeah, the, the, well, the eternal. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you also uh, we, we do disagree because it sounds like you're saying that the Church, the, the Church of Rome on Earth, is going to be uh, destroyed as you know, as if it was like. You know the uh, uh, you know the synagogue, you know the the temple of, of yeah. uh, Jerusalem. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, I mean, what, 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 what good would that do? You know, uh, killing. What good will it know, do? Well, what good would it not do, though? What, what what good does it do to allow the church to exist as it is and just let it sit there like a festering wound? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not. Church is you know, rotting. No, no one is suggesting. Inside. No, no one is suggesting that you know that's going to be. Uh, uh, that you know, I mean, obviously, God is going to renew the church. He's going to purify the church, and there will be chastisements at the end of time. So here's so here's a question that I have: if 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 the church has what is the job of the church? Uh, to preach the gospel and to save souls, basically. Okay, so if the church is and, not, and, and also to keep uh, you know Christians unified. So if the church is not doing its job, which it in a great to a great extent it's not then what is the purpose of allowing it to remain as it is because if if it's, it's not doing if it's not doing no one is saying it. i'm not if, saying that god is going to god has that. to there's right. no point for god to come to earth if the church is doing what god wants it to do but it, if the it church will, is not yeah. doing what god it will wants again. it to do i mean when? you know the, the, uh, you when, know when this, I mean, you know you know that in in ancient times there was a period where uh like uh, you know, maybe like eighty percent, eighty-five percent of the clergy was Aryan. You know, okay, I, I mean, when will you know, it? And, and, when will it be refined? Yeah, you know, how will it be refined? Know, God, you know, God repeatedly raises up a, a new generation of faithful Catholics, and 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 you know, he purifies he purifies the church, he chastises if, it. It's going to happen again. If the if the homosexual infiltration of the Catholic Church has not angered people already. Then how can you expect that to happen? It, there's going to be another generation that will return to the traditional views. We're not seeing that generation, though. We're seeing some people getting getting into that. But even the people who are getting involved in like traditional Catholicism, a lot of them are tainted with nationalism. A lot yeah, of them are tainted with like Holocaust denial and things like that. Even in the trad movement, I'm not really seeing anything special. Even in like Michael Vor, which you know yourself, I confronted Voris on this. Mm -hmm. Voris is supposed to be the alternative to EWTN. We're not seeing anything with him. We're seeing him kind of deceiving people. Actually, not kind of. He is deceiving people. Well, he, you know, he. 
I mean, he has done many, many videos, uh, you know, uh, you know, criticizing bishops for promoting, you know, sodomy and, and yeah, corruption. But, right. That's why I said he's just a little bit more deceptive than other people. I don't know. Well, you do know because you know that he was collaborating with somebody who actually defended pederasty. Yeah. Well, yeah. Obviously. He didn't care. He didn't care when I brought right. it up with them. That, that speaks volumes. I mean, at least like you bring up the okay, you bring up a point. You bring up the Arian heresy and how it was very, very popular. And that's true. Arianism became very popular. But at least in those days, we had um Saint Athanasius. In those days, we had all sorts of people who were vehemently like like uh tenaciously fighting against the Arian heresy. We even had uh later emperors who fought against the Arian heresy. That's um mm -hmm. Uh, you had um, uh, the Byzantine emperor, I don't remember his name, it was a Theodosius, I believe, who fought against the Arian heresy, fought against the Germanic Arians, um, with, uh, General Be Belisarius was sent to fight them, like all, all these things happened. That was a completely different world than, than from where we live now. Like nowadays, there are no Catholic governments, there's no crusades that are being launched, yeah. there's, no like, there's nothing really there, it's just the, the church, you have the church by itself, and again, I'm not saying that the church has to have connections with government. But I'm just saying that in those days, it was just a different time. And there were way more people willing to actually um, yeah. try to spark a, a like true authentic Catholicism. Whereas yeah, well, today, you know, there's a I very mean, strange amalgamation of different things today. Yeah. Like, ever since, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the first time in history, we have a pope saying we need gay civil unions. I don't, I don't know. I've, I've read that uh, the phrase that he used, uh, it was more like... Um, it, 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 it wasn't like civil unions. It was, it was, uh, it was like some sort of arrangements. Oh, damn. It doesn't matter. My, okay. He yeah. said it in Spanish. My yeah. mom, my mom speaks fluent Spanish and she, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. No, he, you he know, other, that. other, I, I sent you, I sent you a video of like, uh, like a Spanish speaking priest, I think. And I know, he yeah. clarified, you know, what, what he thought it meant, you know? But if it, you it, have, it, 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 it's it's not limited to like civil unions. It could also mean, like, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, the context was like the Pope was the the Pope was talking about like uh, he he was saying that um, that you know homosexuals they shouldn't be kicked out of their families. You know that that was the context of what he was talking about. You know, that's not but, what that's not what he said. No, he says they need civil unions. It was very clear from him. He wasn't talking about families booting out people. He was. He said that there needs to be some kind of like government apparatus where they can get, where they can have like civil partnerships. I mean, but it's seriously, yeah, it's, yeah, the phrase he, that he uses, it, it, it was like, uh, like, like a law of convenience or something. Pope Francis privately supported gay civil unions in Argentina. By the way, that is a fact. Like, pri there, said, there's, there's a document on, on the internet, uh, like a letter of his, where he wrote to. Uh, like some uh, sisters, some religious mm -hmm. sisters, uh, you know, kept, you know, uh, saying that uh, like gay marriage is uh, like a ruse of the devil or something. I could send yes. that. To you. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I read, I read all this stuff. Um, he he also um, has has uh, publicly like resisted uh, like gay adoption and things like that. Yeah, the Pope is not gonna. If the Pope, uh, if you have a deceptive Pope, if you have a Pope that's corrupt, do you right? Think yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's just gonna. He's he, gonna he, have he, to tilt the line in some ways and say, "Oh, I'm not for this, but I'm for this." Right? For yeah, him, he's he's sort of like uh like Juan Perón, you know. He plays both sides of uh, sides of the fence. You know, some some things he says, you know, it's it's it sounds purely traditional, like when he talks about the reality of Satan. You the know, Pope needs to be absolutely clear about yeah. what he believes in, and we have this Pope who's yeah. and you know this very well. He's very ambiguous. Yeah, and and it's it's it it, it just clearly indicates corruption like completely like when you have the a pope for this is what i don't understand when you have priests who are preying on young men when you have priests who are doing all these evil things and the bishops will defend them and the priests will cover them cover all this stuff up and then you have the pope himself saying we need civil unions and who am i to judge and all this nonsense if God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and in Jude's letter, in the epistle of Jude, it says that God destroyed Sodom as an example to scare us. Mm -hmm. What makes you think that God's in, that that the people who are supposed to be re representing God, you don't think there's going to be some grand punishment? Uh, there could be. There's going to be. There has to yeah. be.
If if listen, why is like yeah? If, yeah if I'm, church... I'm saying I'm saying it's not gonna. What's okay. not gonna happen is there's not gonna be like total destruction of the Church of Rome. I'm not saying everyone's gonna die, but I'm saying there's gonna be a lot of violence. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, there there's a verse that I want to share with you um, in the chat. Um, uh, let me see here. Hold on. So Isaiah chapter one. It goes on. It says here. Um, it talks about it's addressing Jerusalem and it says, unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors, we would have become like Sodom. We would have become like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. It's it's telling it's calling the rulers of Jerusalem Sodom. So God can identify his holy city with Sodom. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing can be said about the Vatican City. Is that the Vatican City? I mean, come on. When you have the Vatican renting rooms, buying apartment rooms in the biggest gay bathhouse in Europe, don't tell me that's not Sodom. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. So, and and God appointed Israel to be His representative. He had a he built mm -hmm. he had the temple. He appointed Solomon to build the temple. He established a priesthood. All of these things were on earth to represent God. And he told them, he told them, I want you guys to make sacrifices for me. I want you guys to do this on the Passover. I want all these festivals to be done for my name. But then in the same Bible, later on, God actually says, I'm tired of your sacrifices. They mean nothing to me because you guys are wicked. And you can, people could say, well, look, the Vatican, the, the, the Catholic Church has all the, 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 the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a sacrifice. You don't think God could look down and say, you know what? It means nothing to me because look at the look at the wickedness that's being done. Well, it's well. I mean, there's a huge difference because, like, it's not animal sacrifice. It's it's God Himself. It's the fulfillment of the animal sacrifice, so it's actually worse. Well, it, well, well are more, more precisely, it's the fulfillments of what uh, the, the animal sacrifices pre prefigured. It's not the, like a direct continuation. It's the it, Eucharist is the sacrifice of Christ presented on the altar. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is the fulfillment of what the animal sacrifices were supposed to represent. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So if God says, I don't want your sacrifices anymore, and that was with animal sacrifice, and he says that your sacrifices mean nothing, he, 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 he really like curses their sacrifices. How mad do you think God is with these people who will promote Sodom, but then will uplift the Eucharist, which is supposed to be the body and blood of Jesus? It's much worse than what the Jews were doing. Actually, what's going on in the Vatican is way worse than what was happening in Jerusalem. Way worse. I would argue that. Could be, yeah. No, 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 could be. Come on. Come on. Not could be. 100%. Because think about it. The in Jerusalem they had they had the sacrifices, but they were also very corrupt. They were very they were also very exploitative. They murdered the the Son of God. I mean, all these things are really horrific. But then, in and Josephus just says that during the Roman Jewish War, all of Jerusalem became a brothel. So in Jerusalem we have homosexual immorality because Josephus describes it as homosexual. Then we have um, murder, we have all the exploitation, all these things. But what do we have in the Catholic Church right now? Homosexuality. We have people who are uplifting the Eucharist, claiming to be for the Eucharist when they're really for Sodom. We see this all the time. And what does St. Paul say? He says, if you, um, something like, if you take of the body and blood of Jesus unworthily, it's almost like you have murdered Christ yourself. So these people are, I think they're taking part in the murder of Christ. They are, they are really going down the same road of Jerusalem, but I think they're worse because they have more knowledge of God than the people in Jerusalem. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say I don't think we disagree completely. I mean, I think we have, I guess, some disagreement, but I well, think... it's it's a question of what you know, whether you're talking about like a chastisement or or, or some sort of violent punishment, or I mean, chastisement or, or is violent, total destruction of the church, the seats of of authority. The seed, the seed of sacerdotal authority, as Saint Optus, Optus, uh, I forgot what his name is, said. If 
Okay, so I, I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. Chastisement is violence, though. Yeah. If you look at the Old Testament, you read all about you read about the different sackings yeah. of Jerusalem. Yeah. Be they by the Assyrians or be they be it by the uh, like the Persians. Um, well, not Persians didn't really sack Jerusalem, but if you look at the the different people who invaded Jerusalem, they were violent. Yeah. I mean, it, when the Assyrians fought the Hebrews. They slaughtered the Hebrews. It was yeah. nothing to be. It was nothing to be made light of. So, well, uh, if you say it's yeah. chastisement, I say it's destruction. But I think we both know that it's going to be bad. It's going to be violent. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And also, I when I when I speak of the just uh, just to point this out, when I speak of the destruction of the Vatican or the sacking of the Vatican, I'm speaking of it in the context of the end times. So what's going to happen eventually in the end times? The return of Jesus Christ. So if Christ is going to be on earth, then we really don't need a pope. Well, I, you know, I think there's a great possibility that the last pope will be a very holy man. I, I, you know, I, I think that's suggested, you know, by like uh, prophecies, mm -hmm. you know, like um, or like the apparition of Fatima. You know? But if you have the end times and there's great destruction in the world, which is there, there definitely will be, and Christ returns, then I'm not obviously I'm not saying that the church is going to be is going to be uprooted. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is that the hirelings, remember, Jesus differentiates between the shepherd and the hireling. I'm not talking about church as shepherd. I'm talking about church as hireling. And remember what Jesus says. He says that if any of you offend one of these little ones, meaning children, it is better for you to have a millstone wrapped around your neck and thrown into the sea. And remember, remember, Judas was a priest, and Jesus said something to the likes of, it would be better if that man were never born. And remember, I mean, I can give you more examples. God chose Israel to represent him. King David had a war against Israel. And what does it say? In, I think it's in the book of First Samuel. Or Second Samuel, it says, and David fought Israel. Mm -hmm. So just because God establishes something does not mean, or he that or that he chooses a nation or an institution, it doesn't mean that he can't fight against it when it turns evil. Just like the angels were, they were all created by God. They were all supposed to be good, but a third of them were cast mm -hmm. out. But these were angels. Well, it's, it's also a uh, it's also a, a teaching of the church that the church is indefectible. You have to take that into consideration. What do you mean by indefectible? It's, you know, it, it's it's not going to apostatize for, from from Christ. You know, it's it's not going to change its doctrines, and you know. Well, it has changed doctrine. No. Well, how do you? I mean, what do you call, for example? Um, what do you call, for example, the Pope? I'm not, and I'm and, not and, I mean, like, a, like dogmatic uh, doctrines of faith okay. and mor morals. What is the purpose of, of, okay, because I, I hear this all the time. It's kind of like when we talk about America doing bad things, and then people say, but my constitution. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that, where we can say, well, look at what the Pope is doing. Look at what these bishops are doing. Look at what these cardinals are doing. Look at what these priests are doing. But my doctrine. Well, if the doctrine is not being upheld and it's being ignored tremendously, then what is the point of even arguing that, well, the doctrine is still the same? So let's say they keep the doctrine the well, same, it's, but it's their actions of, say otherwise. It's a, it's a sin of omission, but it, it doesn't mean that, you know, the doctrine itself has changed. But if you have it's an entire, permanent. but if you have a church that is going down the road of Sodom, and you and we came to the point where they almost accepted some document that was in favor for Sodom years ago. And if it wasn't for the and if it wasn't for the African bishops, they would have accepted. I mean, if we have come this close to where the church is accepting Sodom, and the Pope himself is saying civil unions, and the Pope himself kissed the hand of a Catholic guy in Italy, I forget his name, who who um I forgot his name, but he was um, saying all sorts of really horrific things that were in favor for Sodom. If the Pope is kissing this guy's hand and saying, oh, yeah, he's great. 
what is the purpose of saying that the doctrine is the same, but the actual people who represent the doctrine are not even following it? They're not even they're not even enforcing it. I've always made a distinction between the church itself and you know, and the in the you know the individual persons who are in power. It's you know, it's important distinction. The doctrine is good, but the institution is corrupt. Just like the Constitution can be good, but America can be absolutely decayed and corrupt. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that, well, the, the well, God, if I said God is going to chastise America, would you disagree with me? No. Okay, but then you can come out and say, but the Constitution. Well, we're not talking about the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the letter of the law. We're talking about the action. It's like when God says, you honor me with your lips, but in your heart, you actually hate me. You have no love. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and when you have a Pope saying civil unions is okay, I mean, I don't care. You, you can reference the doctrine all you want. We're talking, is it being applied? That is, that is the, the, the point of contention here. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, actually the first, the first doctrine that what ceased to be applied was, uh, the doctrine on usury. And that goes back mm -hmm. to like the 1500s mm -hmm. when, um, you know, church leaders started to, uh, um, like, uh, uh, you know, unofficially approve of, you know, the practice of usury. Do you have, do you have children? No. Okay. Do you ever want to have children? Uh, I, I did maybe like 10 years ago, but, okay, but you changed your mind. Uh, yeah, I feel it would just feel re really awkward uh, for me to get married. Uh, it, it's, I don't know, it, it's, 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 you know, my, it's, it's, it's a mess. I'd rather not get into it. Okay. But, okay. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. My point is, my point is if you have children and the children are, I'm not going to say that the children are molested, but I will, what I will say is that let's say you have sons or a son and your son is sexually preyed upon. Not molested, but preyed upon mm -hmm. by a priest. And you go to the diocese and you say, this is what happened. Here's all the evidence. And they don't do anything about it. And then they say, well, the Pope has to make that decision and the Pope doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say there's a huge freaking problem? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, like if I was in that situation, I would, you know, I would expect that kind of a response. Okay. So. My point is, I, we, I we know, can, I, you know, I'm I'm well aware of you know uh, the the corruption and the okay, fine. Yeah. So we can sit here and reference the doctrine all we want, but that's meaningless unless the actual people who are in power are not even referencing it themselves. It's it's not meaningless because the doctrine is true. It's permanently true. Yeah, I'm not saying the doctrine itself is meaningless. I'm saying referencing it all the time becomes meaningless because you and I we're just lay people were saying hey like for example when i was talking to the diocese in um in austin and i said hey and the guy asked me the um what do you call him he was the, uh, the one of the representatives of the diocese ron walker is his name he said what do you want me to do about it just like that and i said mm -hmm. well since you asked me excommunicate him and he rolled his eyes at me and said well we can't we can't do that because you know what he told me because we can only excommunicate if if a soul has been um if someone's soul has been um, damaged in some way, oh, so pr sexual pr preying on se sexually being a sexual predator doesn't hurt anybody. Is that what mm -hmm. you're telling me? I mean, it's come to the point where I feel like we're in the middle of the freaking twilight zone. And it's like, again, it goes back to that my constitution meme. Okay. You can reference the constitution all you want, you can reference the doctrine all you want. But the people who are actually wielding authority in the church, how much of it are, are they actually utilizing? And and one okay, I'll, I'll let you I'll let you respond. I, I don't want to dominate the conversation here. Well, I mean, you know, you have to have supernatural hope. It's it's this you know the, this current situation of the church. It's it's not going to be permanent. I have supernatural hope, and that's why I, I have hope that the Vatican is going to get squashed. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, I've come to the point where I don't care anymore. I am telling you right yeah, now. It, I have it, it doesn't have to be that. All that needs to happen is for you know God to raise up an, a, a generation of, of better priests and better bishops, and we're already seeing that. Okay, but God also upholds. The- it, it, yeah, it it doesn't necessarily have to lead to violence. Um, it, it shouldn't have to be that way, but it, I think it will because God also believes in free will, and God will also use other nations to punish His people. Yeah, Just yeah, I know. Other that. nations to punish the Hebrew, use the Romans, yeah. use the Assyrians, use a bunch of people to 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 and I to um punish the um to punish his people and i think that the same thing is going to happen i mean the catholic church is god's people and if israel was god's people but they weren't exempt from punishment what makes us think that we are exempt from punishment i, I don't point. okay yeah. that's my whole point uh what what i want to ask you is are you going to go back to church Oh God. Uh well, I tried going to church for almost six years and I kept getting sexually harassed. So I don't know. You, you got it seriously. I mean, the, the road that you're on right now, it's like you're just gonna go like full like full doomer mode. Yeah, yeah, just you just you're just gonna be like F it. I don't believe in anything. It's it's all BS. No, 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 no. I'll never become an atheist. That's never gonna happen. Yeah. It, it's just it's just I've never been an atheist. I mean, for most yeah. of my life I didn't go to church actually. Right. Only yeah, and, and and like uh yesterday you were talking about how like you were you've been making you and you're you're making videos about disillusionment. You know, you, you can't dwell upon that, you know. Well, the I'm, reason ser- I, seriously, you know, you know, I, I see you as like a brother, you know, it's okay. like I, I'm I really am concerned about your soul, okay. you know. I appreciate that, but here's the thing. The what I was trying to say yesterday was for so many years or so many hours I have spent watching videos of Catholic like apologists and things like that, mm-hmm. only to realize that these people weren't exactly who people were thinking that they were. For example, for example, um, there's a video that you can are you familiar with Franciscan University? Uh, Steubenville. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. So in Franciscan University, there they have a YouTube channel where you can watch all these different panel discussions, mm-hmm. and um, they had a panel discussion on homosexuality, and they had Scott Hahn there, and they had a priest there, and they had some Catholic scholar there, and there was the host of the show. The entire you can watch this for yourself. Go on Franciscan University. Type in um, just go on YouTube. Type in Scott Hahn. Scott Hahn homosexuality. It's the first video that comes up. Or the second video. It's, it's up there. You'll see it. Franciscan University is the YouTube channel. The entire video, which is over an hour long, are these people not really addressing the, the serious issue of Sodom. Yeah. Not, not quoting Genesis 19. Not quoting Romans chapter 1. Not quoting any of these things. Yeah. The entire video is, uh, is these guys generalizing Sodom. Saying, well, it's a sin like other sins, guys. Yeah, yeah. It's it's another form of concupiscence. It's a sin, guys, yeah. and they're just general. Well, we can't single out this one sin, guys. We have to talk about all these other sins. Right? They're general. They're just they're yeah, generalizing it to the point where it becomes almost it becomes almost irrelevant. Right? Yeah. That's my. Yeah, that was my. We're, 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 yeah. we're all sinners, you know. Yeah, but pe- but people use that as a manipulative tactic. I think. Yeah. So that that was my point yesterday, and I should have um I should have brought that video up but that was one example that was in my head yeah um, i agree with that yeah yeah yeah, yeah but, but you know but there's other people including some priests who are they're contradicting that way of thinking they, they are using the word sodom and they are refer, referring to scripture they are calling it an abomination which cries to heaven for vengeance i've never listen in my area i've never seen that before i know it exists yeah and i have seen it for example yeah, like, yeah like you know you know like the priest on census fidelium you know Wait, aren't those guys? Are you talking about the Diamond Brothers? No, no, no. Census Fidelium. You know, you know uh, the, the priests on there, like Father Ripperger and Father Philip Wolf. Okay. Um, people in chat are saying that I'm I'm becoming a Donatist. I'm not becoming a Donatist. I just, oh God. Okay, yeah. It's but, becoming... but seriously, you, you do need to start going back to church and receiving the Eucharist. Otherwise, your your supernatural your supernatural know, faith, I... hope, and charity it's going to dry up. I was going it needs to be nourished. 
I was going to church loyally every Sunday, and I just saw too many weird things, man. So too many weird things, you know. And and I and I and I've been to like eight or nine different churches. No exaggeration, eight or nine. I was like sincerely trying to find a place to go to, and I just saw me. I saw it's just I live in a very corrupt diocese, very corrupt diocese. Um, the way I look at it is, the way I look at it is. Christ or God established the temple. The temple became utterly corrupt. God established the church and the church. And remember, the church is going through corruption, tremendous corruption. And Christ himself went right into the temple in the most holiest festival in the temple, in the Passover. And he took a whip out and he beat the hell out of a bunch of these people. He didn't say, well, it's a very holy place. It's a very holy time for us. We gotta we gotta respect it. That's not what happened. And there was a priest, Yarbro, who was who was a sexual predator, confirmed sexual predator. And I went into the church and I did I did less than what Jesus did. I didn't have a whip in my hand. I had a camera. And they threw me out and they said, This is a holy, you can't do that. You can't do that. Well, Jesus did it. And Jesus and Jesus didn't say, "Well, you know, I have to go to the temple here because even though it's very corrupt, I have to." Go. Jesus went in there with a whip, so I don't know. I I think there there's got to be a limit. There has got to be a limit. Like if a priest is a is a known predator who preys on young men, and you know this, are you really going to go to that church and take communion from him? No, I'm not. I'm not going to go there. Okay, but that's my that's my point, man. That's my yeah. point. Uh, do you live near the Diocese of Tyler, Texas? No, no, I don't. No, I prefer not to talk about exactly like get into locations and things like that. But um, no, I don't. Um, but anyway, I, 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 actually, like I, I do know what city you live in because, like, when you sent me your number, like the num a number of months ago, it showed like I won't mention it though. Okay, but that was a private conversation. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, okay. Conversation. See ya. All right. Go to church. Okay, man. Bye bye. Anyway.